Hey folks, it's Billy DKY, the truth seeker that simplifies and demystifies. This is going to be my UFC 112 post fight commentary. Like I said, I ain't paying for these anymore unless I can see it for free. I ain't going to commentate on it. So I was eventually able to find it. And uh, so anyway, let's get on with the first fight Anderson Silva versus Damian Maya. I mean, I could sum that up in one word retarded. I mean, I. <laughs> I mean, don't go around bowing. Mm -hmm. You be bowing to the four sides of the earth. But then you're a hypocrite when you're in there fighting. I mean, it's just ridiculous. If the dude really does have true respect for the octagon, the only reason he was running around because he was afraid of getting taken down and getting submitted. Um, I just, you know, I, I'm really glad that I didn't do Into the Mind of Anderson Silva because, you know, this has given me a lot of stuff that I can do the next time Anderson Silva fights. And, like I said, it don't even really deserve um, talking about it. You can sum it up in one word, retarded. So, let's move on to the next one, something worth talking about. Okay. BJ Penn versus Frankie Edgar. And, you know, basically, in, in my opinion... BJ Penn really didn't lose that fight. I mean, it, it was it was close, no doubt. Uh, I mean, Frankie is doing a lot of dancing and stuff, and he did a great job, and he did pretty much what I, you know, I thought he should do to have his best chance of winning. But as far, you know, back in the those of you who used to watch boxing like I did, you know, to 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 be the champion, you have to beat the champion. You can't eke out a decision. And in my opinion, you really didn't even make out a decision. So I mean, I don't know. I just, I mean, don't get me wrong. He he did a good job, but I don't I don't think he really be be BJ in my opinion. So, but okay, let me see what else. Uh, okay, Frankie won't beat the guys that BJ Penn has. He'll he'll lose that title, and BJ, BJ Penn may retire. I don't know. I really don't know. But I know this: if if BJ does stay in in. Uh, in the UFC and doesn't retire, then Frankie will get beat by somebody and BJ will beat that person if they don't beat him in a rematch. So, I don't know. I think BJ probably should just come out and just, because Frankie was going too technical and BJ will let you do what you want to do. In this instance, I think this is an instance where BJ should have just come out and just went wild on him. Like I, like I like to say, when somebody goes too technical, you go primitive on them. So, anyway. Um... And it was another thought. BJ can hardly win a decision. If you go look at his record, you'll find that he don't win many decisions. Now, don't get me wrong. I think he would have won the one over Diego. But, uh, I don't know, man. It's just... It's, I, I don't agree with the decision. Even if it was... I don't think he really beat him. And if he did beat him, I don't think he... Uh, he didn't, you know... It, it's still, you have to beat the champ, in my opinion. So, anyway... Oh, another thing I just want to say on that. I've been noticing that at the highest levels of MMA, it's really becoming a chess match, and they, they sort of... A lot of them are getting boring to watch. It's almost like, you know, you. I don't watch much basketball, but I've heard my dad say this many times, that, uh, you know, watching the NCAA, NCAA, NCAA is a lot better than watching the pros, because, you know, it, and it, like I say, it's getting way it's more like a chess match. It's getting boring to watch some of them, so... Okay, and now really that came that came about because of the Mad Hughes versus Renzo Gracie. It just started to become obvious, you know. It's, everybody's so so strategic and find that one weak spot, and they don't really commit. It's not really a fight, but anyway. Okay, Mad Hughes versus Henzo Gracie, and then he basically sums this up in Graham Fighter striking match. Boring. I mean, don't get me wrong; it's a good fight and all, but I, you know, basically Mad Hughes, you know, he basically dominates where the fight takes place and then he systematically defeats him softens his opponent up and then attacks again it's that chess match kind of thing next one Gustafson Gustafson son versus Phil Davis I, I mean it's all right fight I really I really surprised it Gust, Gustafson son however you say it I was really surprised at how well he did against Davis especially on those takedowns because you know I've there's been a lot of hype behind Phil Davis about him being able to take people down and do that. And really, don't get me wrong, Phil, Phil Davis is probably a really good fighter, but there's been a little bit more too, too much hype for what I'm seeing. So, 
he's going to have to really evolve to to impress me really much more than that. But um, like I said, he's got plenty of growing. He said that, so we'll see what he can do. Terry Adam versus, excuse me, Rafael Dos Andos. Okay, basically when it got to the ground, on the feet it's pretty even it seemed like. But once it got to the ground, I don't know if you could tell, but I could tell it was only a, it was only a time, it was basically only a matter of time before Rafael Dos Santos got Terry Adam in some kind of submission. I could just see it coming. So basically, Terry Adam needs to really work on his ground skills and get it up because it was just it was completely obvious to me after they really started going to the ground. And I think Terry probably knew it too and i think that's why he burned himself out on that guillotine but i could be wrong on that but next fight mark munoz versus kendall grove oh man let's see what would i say oh but i'm mark's style is really he needs to evolve because he doesn't he doesn't even set up his takedowns just charging in and charging in and and I really don't like that style. I don't necessarily have nothing personal against him. It's just, you know, he needs to learn from people like Frankie Edgar and GSP how to, you know, strike and then follow it up with a takedown. So, I mean, I'm really not impressed with his evolution of converting to a wrestler to an MMA fighter. So, and basically, Kendall's doing a good, pretty good job. And, but I think Kendall's problem is once you're really pressuring with that wrestler's pressure, then he just sort of breaks down. But, uh,. That's really all I had to say, I think. Um, wow. I just, I really can't believe Anderson Silva did that. That was really just so pathetic. And, you know, like I say, you can, this this stuff don't mean nothing. You know, if, if you can't do something before and after the ring and then act like a douchebag during the ring and expect this. I don't buy the respect no more. You know what I'm saying? I think it's just something he's taught. He's repeating it or... Or maybe he's found it gets him out of trouble, you know, so I don't know, man. That was just like I say, I don't it's ridiculous. However, we do have a good fight coming up this week. Since I got a couple more minutes, I'll talk about it. Um Strike Force Nashville this weekend at uh on on CBS, and I think most of us can probably get that for free, so obviously I'll be doing a post fight video on that pretty soon. Or, you know, right after the fight, I'll do it probably within, you know, like say, 30 minutes to an hour after it's done. So, I'm really looking forward to that. Dan Henderson versus Jake Shields. I mean, that's that that's going to be an interesting fight. I think Jake Shields will get beat pretty bad, but I don't know. I could be wrong. It's going to really tell us where Jake Shields is compared to Dan Henderson. And I'm also looking really looking forward to that. Uh, King King Mo versus... Uh, Gargo, I kind of was, Musashi, however, what I can't even think of what his first name is, Musashi. You don't have to write it, I've heard it, I know what it is, I'm just skipping my mind right now. And then there's another fight on that camp. Oh, yeah, Gilbert Mendez versus Aoki, I think, from Japan or something like that. So that, that I think that guy's supposed to be pretty good. And if you want to tell me that, that's fine. Is, is Aoki some badass from Japan? I think he is. Isn't he the guy that broke uh, somebody's arm? So. That's going to be a really good card. And really, I'll be honest with you, I don't really believe the UFC is going to be able to hold out on these pay-per-views for much longer because they're getting pressures from outside themselves like this. Being on CBS free, you know, it, it, I'll, I'll save some of it for my Into the Mind of Daniel White video I'm going to be doing. But basically, you know, if you really love the fans, then put it on free TV. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody wants to pay $45, you know, to... Maybe once a month I was okay with it, but when it starts coming two and three, you know, to watch the Rye Favor, Jose Aldo, I mean, I mean, come on, dude. I ain't going to spend $135 on your program, you know? Especially when there's so much free entertainment on TV. I'm not that in love with MMA, you know what I'm saying? I can wait a day to watch it for $45. But anyway, you'll see the pressures eventually mount up, and you'll have to go free. Anyway, um, like I said, I don't know... I'm not going to do any um, predictions on the uh, the Strike Force Nashville fight card because I really, be honest with you, I don't know enough about how they all match up to really know. But it's I think it's going to be a really interesting card. I'm really looking forward to it. And like I said, there will be a post-fight video shortly after the fight. So until then, later, folks.